Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug erythromycin, also known by the brand erythrocin and many others. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Erythromycin belongs to the macrolide class of antibiotics. Macrolides tend to end with the suffix thromycin, just like azithromycin and clarithromycin. To understand how macrolides work, we first have to understand a bit about the anatomy of cells. On the left is an example of a bacterial cell, and on the right, an example of a human cell. You can see all their different little organelles, which each carry out specific functions that keep the cell alive. Inside both bacterial and human cells, ribosomes are present to synthesize proteins. Proteins, as we know, are super important. Proteins are required in the normal function of cells, such as repairing damage to the cell or aiding in chemical processes. So if for some reason the ribosomes stop functioning and stop synthesizing these proteins, the cells would not be able to function and they would eventually die off. The next thing to note is that all ribosomes are made up of subunits. You can imagine we've just zoomed in on a ribosome here. Each ribosome has a large subunit and a small subunit that are both required to synthesize proteins. The subunits work together to first read information that comes in on messenger RNA or mRNA, then, the subunits use that information to create amino acid chains, which eventually form into proteins. So again, the subunits of ribosomes read instructions from mRNA and spit amino acids out the other end. This process is called translation. You can think of messenger RNA as just that, the message that needs to be translated. And the ribosome is like the translator, which takes that message and uses it to make proteins. Now, bacterial cells and human cells both need these proteins to function. So how can we inhibit just the production in bacterial cells? Well, it just so happens that ribosomes are slightly different in bacterial cells. In bacterial cells, the large subunit of the ribosomes are 50S, and the small subunit is 30S. S stands for the Svedberg unit, which is not too important for this video, but in general, the bigger the number, the larger the particle. So in bacteria, there's a 50S and a 30S subunit, but in human cells, ribosomes are made up of a 60S and a 40S subunit. So essentially, they function the same way to make proteins, they're just different sizes. Now, erythromycin, which we'll say are these little red triangles, happens to only target 50S subunits. Erythromycin binds to the 50S subunits and interferes with their ability to synthesize proteins. This means that only bacterial ribosomes are affected, leaving human cells untouched. So one last time, erythromycin enters bacterial cells, binds to the 50S subunit of the ribosomes, inhibiting protein synthesis, which eventually causes the bacteria to die. And that is how erythromycin and macrolides in general work as antibiotics. Erythromycin is a broad spectrum antibiotic, which means that it can act on a wide variety of bacterial infections. This includes both gram-positive and gram-negative susceptible bacteria. Erythromycin also comes in many different forms, which all have their respective uses. Erythromycin comes as an ophthalmic ointment to treat various bacterial infections of the eyes, and is commonly used to prevent eye infections in newborn babies. Erythromycin also comes orally, intravenously, and as a topical gel, and can be used to treat a variety of both upper and lower respiratory infections, and various skin, genital, and GI infections. Again, this is why it is considered a broad-spectrum antibiotic, because it has so many uses. Erythromycin, along with many antibiotics, may cause nausea and diarrhea. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea, which is usually three or more loose, watery stools per day, is common when starting many antibiotics. Diarrhea should improve once the antibiotic is complete, but this is not always the case. It is always important to consult your doctor before taking any anti-diarrheal medications while taking erythromycin, as they can actually worsen the problem. Although rare, erythromycin can cause QT prolongation, which could be seen on an ECG, and tachycardia, which is an abnormally increased heart rate. Also, erythromycin may cause hepatotoxicity, which can present as jaundice and hepatic failure. These are just some of the side effects to look out for. Due to all these side effects, avoid use in those who already have QT prolongation or hepatic dysfunction. And of course, avoid use in those who have hypersensitivity to macrolides. Also, avoid use during pregnancy and breastfeeding, as erythromycin belongs to the FDA pregnancy category B. 
and used cautiously in those with impaired renal function. Always complete the full course of antibiotic therapy even if symptoms improve. Increase fluid intake to decrease the risk of dehydration, especially if diarrhea is present. Be aware of the interactions with erythromycin, just some of which include warfarin, carbamazepine, and many more. Superinfection is also worth mentioning. Superinfections are infections occurring after or on top of another infection, and are thought to be caused by damage to the host flora. Your host flora are your natural gut bacteria that normally prevent the growth of pathogenic organisms. But some antibiotics, especially broad-spectrum antibiotics, can damage those natural bacteria. So teach clients to report any new symptoms, like a new sore throat or cough, which may be an indication of super infection. And that's about it for the basics of erythromycin. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.